the journal properties of the waves uh, these are the learning objectives once we completed this session you should be able to um, answer the question related to these objectives first what is the concept of the wave motion or what is the meaning of a wave wave basically a wave transmit energy from one place to another it is a mode of energy transfer like example if you are calling someone so how the energy transfer from you to other person is in the form of waves so wave is basically a way by which energy can transfer from one place to another like as you can see here the water waves the particles are moving and they transfer energy from one place to another like this is a source here at this point the water is produced and this water wave will travel from one place to another and is it it will transfer energy as it will transfer energy how the energy is transferred we call that as a wave so wave like example what is the concept of the wave wave means a way by which energy transfer from one place to another as you can see this image like these are the water waves or waves in the sea so the energy the work is done on the particle or energy transfer from one place to another and how we say how the energy is transfer we the energy is transfer in the form of wave so wave is simply a mod or a way of energy transfer and there are two main types of waves one is called a transverse wave another one is longitudinal what is the concept of a transverse wave the wave in which the particle vibrate or move perpendicular to direction of the the vibration of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of the wave we call that as a transverse wave example as you can see in this image how the particles are moving as you can see the particles are moving up and down and how the wave is traveling wave is either traveling towards right or left hand side so wave is traveling in this way this is the direction of the wave and this is the direction of the particles so particles are moving up and down and the wave is moving towards right hand side or left hand side so what is the angle between the movement of the particle and the direction of the wave the angle between them is 90 degrees so whenever the angle is 90 degree we what we call when the angle is 90 we call that as perpendicular so the wave in which the particle vibrate or particle move perpendicular to the direction of the wave what we call that wave this type of wave is known as transverse wave is it clear and is it it is easy to remember this term transverse like example when you write a letter t so when we write this letter t what are the angles the both angles that is 90 so the wave in which the angle between the particle the movement of the particle or the motion of the particle and the direction of the wave is 90 we call that as transverse wave is it clear this concept of a transverse wave So as you can see the particles are moving up and down like when we focus on one of the particle that particle is moving up and down and the energy the wave travel either towards right hand side or towards the left hand side the energy transfer towards the right and left we call that wave as a transverse wave so note that the wave are carrying the energy from one place to another but the water particles are not transferred like particle is just one moving up and down and that is transferring the energy to the next particle 
another image which shows how the wave travel as you can see the particles are moving up and down and the energy transfer towards the right hand side so direction of the particle the movement of the particle and the movement of the wave it is perpendicular or 90 degree to each other so when the direction of the particle and the direction of the wave is 90 degree or perpendicular we call that as transverse wave like both are the examples of the transverse wave but what happened the first one the vibration is much faster the particles are moving faster so and the second one the particles are moving slower so the speed at which the wave travel in the first one is much higher as compared to the second picture because greater amount of energy to, uh, means greater rate energy transfer or energy transfer in a short time this is also example like example there's a spring and vibrating to and right towards right and left so if you are vibrating the spring towards right and left and the energy transfer in this way so what is the angle between them the angle between the vibration and the energy transfer is perpendicular or the angle is 90 or we can say they are perpendicular to each other we call that as transverse wave examples of transverse wave like example water and all the electromagnetic wave later in this topic we'll discuss electromagnetic spectrum uh, simply electromagnetic waves are the waves which can travel through vacuum does not require a medium like radio waves microwaves infrared visible ultraviolet x-ray gamma these are known as electromagnetic waves they all are transverse in nature transverse means the vibration is perpendicular to the direction of the wave then for a transverse wave we define certain parameters for a transverse wave the disturbance or vibration is perpendicular to direction of the wave the highest point of a transverse wave is known as a crest and the lowest point of a transverse wave is known as trough and the center of the wave that is a mean position so distance from center of the wave the mean position to the crest what we call distance we call that as amplitude and same way distance from mean position to the extreme that is also known as amplitude the distance between the two successive crest like there is this is one crest this is the other crest so the distance between the two successive crest what we call we call that as wavelength it is denoted by a greek alphabet which is lambda and this is known as wave length or length of the wave same way the distance between or length of one wave is also known as wavelength like example if i hide all the parts So this is one complete wave. So this is a one complete wave. What we call this one complete wave, we are, the length of the wave is known as the wave length. Is it clear the concept of the wavelength? The length of the wave, like one complete crest and one complete trough, that total length is refers to wavelength denoted by a Greek alphabet lambda. And the height of the wave is known as, height or depth of the wave is known as amplitude. Another image, like this is a crest, this is another crest. So distance between the two crests is also known as wavelength or distance between the two troughs, also known as wavelength or length of one complete wave. Like example, one complete crest and one complete trough, that length is also known as wavelength. The distance from center of the wave to the trough or center of the wave to the crest, that distance is known as amplitude. So height or depth of the transverse wave is known as amplitude, whereas the horizontal distance for a one complete vibration or one complete wave 
is known as the wavelength. Another example, as you can see, a transverse wave. So this, the highest points are known as a crest. The lowest points are known as a troughs. And the distance between the two successive crests or distance between the two successive troughs, that is known as wavelength. And the height of the wave, the total height of the wave, that is known as amplitude, height or depth. So amplitude is basically amplitude of a wave is a maximum displacement of a wave from its rest position or mean position. And the wavelength is refers to distance between the two successive crest or two successive troughs, or we can also say the distance of or length of the one wave is known as wavelength. Is it clear till this point? The concept of the amplitude and wavelength of a transverse wave. So amplitude is a maximum disturbance which is caused by wave and it can be measured from a middle to the peak or the height or middle to a trough. The symbol is, we normally use a symbol small a to measure the amplitude and the SI unit of amplitude is meter. And wavelength, the length of one complete wave that is called a wavelength from peak to peak or from trough to trough and it is denoted by a Greek alphabet. This is a symbol, this is not uh, Y or N, it is a Greek alphabet which is known as Lambda. And the SI unit of the length is, uh, the wavelength is meter because it is a length, length of the wave that's why the SI unit is meter. Now which point is exactly wavelength from A? Which point is exactly wavelength away from A? Like we have point A, if I say one wavelength away, when one wave completed, which point is this? A, B, C, the options are B, C, D, E, F, G. Which point is one wavelength away? So when we check, the answer is E. Because what is the meaning of one wavelength? We, this is the start like example, this, the wave started here and then the wave will end till this point. This is a one complete wave. It started, it's not starting from the mean here. It is starting from position A. So as it starts from position A and the length, when we complete, if I say D, why D is not the right answer? Because at D, it's not a full wave. Full wave is not completed. So if A is there, the wavelength apart is E. Another example, like this is a transverse wave in which the particles are vibrating perpendicular or 90 degree. If we have D, which point is a wavelength away from D? Which point is wavelength away from D? I want participation from everyone. Now that's right. So when we check D, so one com the same region we should reach. So it is it matches with P. Now about J, which point is wavelength apart from J? P, the previous P was the right answer. Now the new one, J, what is the right answer? Which one is wavelength apart from J? So when we check J, we draw a line like the horizontal line. And if we reach that point again, we call that as a wavelength apart. So when we draw the horizontal line, So it matches with what? It matches with V. So J and V are wavelength apart. So whenever you want to find the wavelength apart, a point which is wavelength apart, you will draw a horizontal line. As we know, 
the distance between the two successive crest or two successive troughs that is known as wavelength or length of the wave. Example B. So which point is wavelength apart from B? When we draw the line again, so that is equals to N. Point N is wavelength apart from B. If we have talking about M, so this is M. When we draw a line from horizontal line from M, there is no other point. So if we draw opposite direction, the point A is there, which is wavelength apart. So the wavelength apart from M is A. So wavelength is the distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs. The frequency, what is the concept of the frequency of the transverse wave or frequency of a wave? It is number of waves every second, number of vibration per second. We call that as frequency. Denoted by small f symbol and united hertz or second inverse. Example. This is a 10 second timer. So I want everyone to focus on one of the point, like example, focus on this point and tell in 10 seconds how many vibration occur. I will start the timer. In 10 seconds, how many vibration occur? I'll start the timer now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So how many vibration occur in 10 second timer in 10 seconds in 10 second it was having 10 vibrations what is the meaning of frequency the frequency means number of vibration per second so whenever we want to calculate a frequency how many vibration every second so the number of the vibrations divided by the time interval. So how many vibrations are there? 10 vibrations are there and how much time it took to complete that 10 vibration in 10 seconds. So 10 divided by 10. So that is equals to 1. So the frequency here or the number of vibration per second that is 1 hertz like it is vibrating one time every second. Is it clear this example of the frequency? And how the frequency of this one is one hertz. Why it is one hertz? Because there are 10 vibrations in 10 seconds and frequency means number of vibration every second. So number of vibration divided by time, we will get the frequency. Then the second one, focus on one of the point. And I will start the timer and state how many vibration every second occur. I'll start the timer again. So, so I'll start the timer now and tell how many vibration in 10 seconds. So it is approximately what it appear, it appear 14 vibrations occur for this one. There are 14 vibrations. In 10 seconds, why 10 seconds? This is a 10 second timer. But what about the frequency? The term frequency means number of vibrations every second so number of vibration divide total vibration divided by time will get the frequency so there are 14 vibration in 10 seconds so 14 divided by 10 that's equal to 1.4 hertz so it means it undergo 1.4 vibrations or 1.4 oscillation every second so frequency refers to how many times the particle will vibrate or oscillate 
every second. The last one, another example, if you want to work out the frequency, just focus on any one of the point, like if you focus on this point. So if I start the timer, so it is one, two, three, four, five. So there are five vibration in 10 seconds. So this will undergo five vibration in 10 seconds. We want to find the frequency. The frequency is number of vibration divided by time or how many vibration every second. So five divided by 10, the frequency will be 0 0.5 Hertz. So this wave, this will undergo vibration like 0.5 vibration or half vibration every second. Is it clear the concept of frequency? That how many times the particles are moving or vibrating every second or how many complete oscillations are there every second, we call that as frequency. Then what is the meaning of uh, period or time period? That period or time period means time the wave will take to complete one vibration. We call that as a time period. And time period is reciprocal of frequency, like opposite of frequency. So as the, the previous examples, we were getting or measuring a frequency. So what is the time period? Time period is time to complete one vibration. Time period is reciprocal of frequency. So T is 1 over F. So here it will be 1 divided by 1. So the time period is 1 second. When you check the other option, like T is equals to 1 divided by F. So it will be 1 divided by 1.4. So 1 divided by 1.4 because the frequency and time period, they are reciprocal of each other. So 1 divided by 1.4, that is equals to 0. 7 one second and the last one the time period is 1 divided by f so 1 divided by half that is equals to 2 seconds so you can clearly see the one which is having a highest frequency will have the shortest time period and one which is having the lowest frequency will have the greater time period so that is the reason that is the meaning that time period and frequency are inversely proportional so if the wave is taking more time, it will have a shorter frequency. If wave is taking less time to complete the vibration, it will have higher frequency. So time the wave will take to complete one vibration, we call that as time period. Then there is an equation which relate the wave speed, this, the frequency and the wavelength. And that is known as a wave equation where wave speed is equals to frequency multiplied by wavelength or v is equals to f lambda so this is a very important equation and why we call this as a wave equation because it is valid for all types of waves so it is valid for all kind of wave or all types of wave that's why we call that as wave equation like we can use this equation for sound, we can use this equation for light, we can use this equation for any electromagnetic wave. So V is equals to F lambda or speed is frequency multiplied by wavelength. This is about the transverse wave. The second type of wave is known as a longitudinal wave. What is a longitudinal wave? The longitudinal wave is the one in which the particles vibrate parallel to the direction of the wave. As you can see in this image that these are the air particles and this is a cone of the loudspeaker. So as the cone of the loudspeaker is vibrating to and fro, this cone of the loudspeaker or cone of the speaker collide with the air particles so which cause the air particles to vibrate so which direction the air particles are moving 
as we disturb the cone, the cone vibrate, this cause the air particles to vibrate. So which direction the air particles are moving, they're moving right and left, either towards right or left. And which direction the energy is transfer or the wave is traveling, that is traveling towards right hand side. So the direction in which the particles are moving and the direction in which the energy is transferring, both are in the same way, same direction or parallel. So what we call this type of wave, we call this as longitudinal wave. So longitudinal is the one in which the particle moves same as the direction of the wave. And it transverse, the particles were moving up and down and the wave is traveling towards right or left. We call that as transverse wave. Is it clear the concept of the longitudinal wave, the wave in which the particles are vibrating parallel? And for a longitudinal wave, we define certain parameters like you can see some regions, some parts, the particles are closer to each other and some regions, the particles are away from each other. So the region where the particles are very close to each other, they're tightly packed. We call that as compression. And the region and the region where the particles are away from each other, we call that as rarefaction rarefaction or expansion having a same idea which region you think the pressure is high between the particles compression or rarefaction which region there is a high pressure compression or rarefaction which region you think the pressure between the particles pressure on the particle So compression, the pressure is high because the particles are closer to each other. So in a compression, there's a high pressure, whereas rarefaction, there's a low pressure. So another image which shows, like example, if we have a tuning fork, a tuning fork, these are the air particles, the black spots are representing the air particle. So when the sound is produced, the sound travel in all the direction. It is moving towards um, up, right, left, as well as down. But when we compare the movement of the particle in that region, like example, if we compare the movement or motion of the particle, so particle and the direction in which the particles are moving and the energy transfer, both are same here. As we take this region, the particle vibration and energy transfer is same. Here also particle vibration and energy transfer is same. Downwards also the vibration of the particle and energy transfer is same. So what we call this, we call that as longitudinal wave. So longitudinal wave is the one in which the particle vibrate parallel to direction of the wave. So waves are basically wave is a way by which energy transfer from one place to another and waves are divided into two categories. Either it can be a transverse wave or it can be a longitudinal. A transverse wave, the vibration is perpendicular. Whereas longitudinal wave, the vibration is parallel to the wave. And when we represent uh, the transverse wave to draw a transverse wave, we draw in this manner. But when we draw a longitudinal wave, we represent it by the particles. Some region, the particles are closer and some region, the particles are 
a ver. So region where the particles are closer, we call that as compression. And the region where the particles are away, we call that as rarefaction. And in a transverse wave, the region of high pressure, uh, the top region is known as crest and the bottom one is known as trough. The distance between the two successive crest, that is known as the wavelength. Same way, the distance between the two successive compressions, like from one compression to another, that is known as wavelength. Example of transverse wave. Like light waves are there, radio waves are there, water waves are there, and examples of longitudinal, like sound waves are longitudinal, and wave in a compressed spring. So these all are longitudinal waves is it clear the concept of the wave the wave is basically the mod or way of energy transfer and a wave can be longitudinal or it can be transverse in a longitudinal we have region of compression and rarefactions So example, the diagram shows how the displacement of a water waves vary with the wavelength. The wavelength is 8 cm. In the state the amplitude, so how to know the amplitude, how we will get the amplitude. Amplitude is the height of the wave. So when we measure this height, we call that as amplitude. So what is the amplitude here? That's equal to 2 mm. Then calculate the frequency. How to get the frequency? Frequency is reciprocal of the time. F is equals to 1 over T. So if I take the time for one wave, like it started from here, and this is the point where one wave completed. So one wave completed in how much time? This is a time axis so one wave completed in half second. So 1 divided by 0 0.5, that is equals to 2 hertz. So the frequency is equals to 2 hertz. Then the speed, how to get the speed? Speed is frequency multiplied by wavelength. So V is equals to F lambda. When we multiply the two factors, speed into wavelength, frequency into wavelength, we'll get the speed of the wave. If the wavelength is in meet in centimeter, then answer of the speed is centimeter per second. If wavelength is in meter, then the answer will be meter per second. Another question, a radio station is there broadcast on the wavelength of 250. So wavelength is or lambda is given, the speed is 3 into 10 power 8. Calculate the frequency. So frequency is speed divided by wavelength. When we divide, we'll get 1.2 into 10 power 6 hertz, or we can say 1200 kilo hertz. So this was about the wave, the concept of the wave. Any question related to this topic, the first topic, which is about the type of the waves and some definitions related to the wave. The wave is basically a mod or a way of energy transfer.